Well, here we are at week three. We've gone from the kit in the box of a bunch of loose pieces to our completed wood, co wood cook stove. I'm really excited to share with you the finishing technique I used on this stove. There's a few optional steps in this video. But join me and see how easy and fun it is to bring this kit to a final result. All right, so we are back for our third and final installment on this little adventure of, a, of putting together the wood stove, the wood cook stove. Now I did one step, I had to do it off camera and I forgot to take a before picture. But what I, I took our completed model and all the black pieces that are going to be in the finished model and I took them outside and I spray painted them with a black satin spray paint. I did that to get rid of the plasticky looking shine. Now that's optional. You don't have to do that step. If you don't have spray paint, don't have a place to spray paint it, don't worry about it. Just continue on with the kit the way the directions state. It's not a big deal. I just wanted to get rid of that plastic look and see if I could make it look as little like plastic as I could. So I did that. And I did all these pieces. Then I got to looking at the chrome pieces. And the chrome pieces looked like this. And to me that was just too much. So what I did was I got out my aluminum colored spray paint and I spray painted these pieces. Just to tone down that harsh, shiny, fake chrome look that they had. And I love how these turned out. There's, we're going to go a few more steps. Like I said, the spray painting is optional. If you don't have the ability to spray paint, I really wouldn't brush paint this. I would skip it if you can't spray paint it, but that's just my opinion. But I really think the spray painting of the satin color, just the satin black, just, it made it look so much less like plastic. And then I wanted to go a little over the top on this. So I've been playing with some different things. We are going to glue the chrome pieces on now because I've decided to kind of blend it together by doing my next step with the chrome pieces intact. And I forgot to get water, so I'll have to get that ready too. So we have a couple of pieces to do. This is our, what was this called? This is called our check damper. And this goes right here. If I can get it in place, hopefully you're seeing that. It goes right there on the chimney. There's a little hole for it. It just fits right there. We'll get that on place, and we need to put this on to the door. We need to make sure that it's right side up. It will only fit in one way, it looks like. So let's make sure that's going to fit. Yeah. So let's get a little bit of glue in here. And I'm just going to put a drop there and then kind of work it around to where I need it with a toothpick. Because we actually need it on the very outside edge. So I'm pulling it out to the outside edge rather than trying to squirt it there. And since this won't be handled a lot, I'm not going to worry too much about the fact... Oops, I don't have quite enough glue. I'm not going to worry too much about the fact I'm gluing painted surfaces together. We're only doing it in these few little places. And if these come apart, I can always re-glue in these spots. But this glue has been sitting for, or this paint has been sitting for, all day 
the black since yesterday and this the chrome since this morning. All right, so I'm going to push that down in there. And then we're going to let this glue dry overnight after I glue these pieces together. So now make sure you know where you're going with this piece before you start getting ready to glue it in. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Um, it's been kind of fun putting this together. Let's see. Yeah, that's about where I want it. And the other piece we've got is this. And this is what fastens to the wall behind the stove pipe. So that um, it makes a nice seal. And if you're installing this kit finish stove into a room box or a house permanently, go ahead and glue this piece to the wall then when you're ready to finish up. Now in some houses, like I know the, we still heated with wood when I was little, in fact we still heated with wood until a few years ago. Um, the This part of our wood stoves when I was growing up was not chrome, it was actually painted. So that's another option. If you want to make this look a little more country, you would probably paint this. Let's see. I think I need to raise that up just a little bit so it sits flat. Put that under there. And we need, is this a water decal? I'm looking at my uh, my instructions. This is just a water-based decal. I'm going to have to go get some water, and we'll do that in probably do this in the morning because it's getting it's starting to get dark in here. I noticed, so we'll let this glue dry, and then I can get this moved out of my way. We can put this on, and then we can glue the stove to the stove board, and then we can do one last optional step to our stove. Well, the next step is to put the decal onto the uh, stove base. Let's see if I've let this sit. I tried to loosen a corner and actually tore my decal a while ago. There we go. Now it's starting to let loose. So you soak it in water. I'm My biggest problem with decals of any kind is I'm always too impatient. And there's probably better ways to do this. You guys are probably sitting there yelling at the, at the screen saying, no, do it this way, do it this way. I always fumble around with decals, so I'm not even sure why I did it on camera, but I did. Let's see if I can get this picked up. The main trick with this is just get it straight. And if you're creative, you could probably do a different base. Like, I know that... Pretty sure if I remember remembering back, um, we always had brick underneath our wood stove, so I bet a, you could make a brick base either with brick pa printed paper on um, card, or you could cover this base with that, or you could maybe you know build brick into your floor. It's up to you. Now we will need to poke the holes back in where our legs are going to go. And then after this dries, your stove can be done. And I will go take a picture of the stove at this point that I'll insert into the video here. Uh, so you can see what it looks like at this point. And then I'm going to take it just that little extra bit in the next step and show you something fun that you can do to make it a little more special. Okay, so here's our stove. I, I put the door on. You just set this on. It's hinges so this one can come off again. And we're going to take these little off. I did take a picture which will be some point on the video. This is what the stove looks like 
assembled with just the spray paint on. And remember, the spray paint is optional, as is this next step. Now, I debated whether I wanted to glue this to its base. I decided not to glue it to its base until our next step is done because I want to be able to get to the places more easily. And I'm trying a new product. I bought this uh, Perfect Pearls aged patina set the other day. Um, the kind of spendy, I think it was marked $17 or $18, but I had a 50% off coupon. And I've been wanting to try something like this for a while. So I got it home, never had used it before. Kind of played with it on the back of the stove. And by the way, when you're doing something new, try it out on a, you know, first I tried it down the bottom, then I tried it on the back. <laughs> I tried it on some of the, the trees that were, that it was molded with. So I think I know what I'm doing, even though I've never really done this too much. But it's fun, and I like the technique. Now what these are, I'll put a link to the Ranger website with the Perfect Pearl stuff. This was in with the rubber stamping at my giant fabrics. Um, I know they're used in rubber stamping, they're used in scrapbooking some. This is the pewter color I liked for this. The, by the way, the set I got came with pewter, heritage gold, blue patina, and green patina. And I thought these could be a lot of fun with other stuff. They can be used with clays, they can be used with other things. Now from what I've read, this is a mica powder but it's got a binder and stuff already in it so you don't need to add that you do use something to hold it down now you can get the surface wet I actually had quite a discussion on Facebook with one of my Facebook fans and I also then got on YouTube and did I watched tons of videos on people using this kind of picked and chose what I what I think works for me and that's how I'm going to show you. You can do this, you know, however it works for you. Now this obviously is, again, this is optional. So you start out by putting on something that's going to let it bind. You can either get it wet, like I said, or you can use the perfect medium that comes in the package. And I found using just a makeup sponge, and I get these makeup sponges at Dollar Tree. Just kind of rush it on rub that on and you'll feel it a little bit tacky anywhere you want that to be and I should have a second I have to grab a piece of paper I want to do this on a piece of printer paper so I because I found this is pretty messy That's what the, what the powder looks like. I don't know if the camera's picking up. It's got a little bit of an iridescence to it. It's gorgeous, just on its own. Comes with these two brushes, a detailed brush and a bigger brush. Dip it in. I'm using it kind of like I do when I do like mineral eyeshadow. Dip it in and then kind of tap it off and push it on. Then, And I'm doing it, I decided to do it over the chrome. I kind of played with it on the chrome. Let me get quiet enough. It goes a little too aggressive knocking it off there. I'm going to use my, one of my other brushes just to kind of buff this off a little. There, I think that just looks so good. I hope the camera is picking up the difference. Let's put the door back on the stove for a second. If I can get it back on there. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. It just dresses this up. I'm gonna zoom in, whoops, for just a moment. You can kind of see it. See how it brings that? It almost looks, it looks more like metal than it did before. Now to set this, we have a couple of options. According to what I've read, you can set this by just letting it be like in a mist of water when you're done. Or you can, one of my viewers said she uses like a, um, 
a spray finish, which I think I'm probably going to hit this with a satin spray finish. Now, this, we're going to do the next spot. And I won't bore you by doing the whole stove on camera. And be very careful when you're working with places like around the legs that you don't break them or the shelves around those handles that I'll have to be very, very careful on those spots. But I just really love how this, and this was totally an experiment. It was totally a spur of the moment purchase where it was like, well, oh, what do I want to do with this? I had a couple of ideas and they didn't have, my dry fabrics didn't have any of what I wanted, that I had in mind to do. Um, my dry fabrics is one of the small ones. It's not a big superstore. I go to a big superstore when I go to, when I go in to do my major shopping, but it's like 50 miles away, so I don't go there very often. There's another one that's about 30 miles away, but I don't like it as well. I'd rather go the, the extra distance and go to the the one I like better but so my dry fabrics is really tiny um, and I really didn't have time this week to go all the way into to even Michaels which is about see dry fabrics about 12 miles the Michaels is about probably 15 from here and I just didn't have the time to go clear down there dry fabrics has the advantage of being across the street from my grocery store so I go there a lot more often. And most of the time, they have what I need. Now we've got a stove. In my opinion, what this looks more like now, it looks like this is the stove that the owners were very, very proud of. They've spent, you know, maybe mom has spent, face it, it would have been mom, spent hours polishing the stove up Maybe companies coming. Just get that stove really, really looking nice. So I am going to continue doing this. I'll finish the stove up, and then I'll come back and show you when it's done. Well, everything is patinaed or perfect pearled or whatever you want to say, except the rack. I decided the oven rack probably wouldn't need to be polished. Um, everything's done. I and then I buffed it all off really well. And where's my other? There's my other little tea shelf. So I really like how this has come out. Now one of the, most of the directions, including the one from the company that makes this, say that really all you need to do is just miss some water above it. Not directly on it necessarily, just above it. A lot of people doing paper just miss the water in the air and just wave the paper through it. And when that dries, in theory, it's all set. It, the binder in there is made to react with moisture. So we'll let this dry. Uh, well, it's, yeah, it's fine. We won't let it dry. We'll just go ahead and put it together. Oh, I didn't bring the glue over. I've got my glue put away. I'll have to find my glue. All that will take is just a drop of glue on each of these feet. Then put the feet down into the tile that goes under it. This is your little lifter to lift your, um, your tops off where your elements would be. Oops. I'm just going to keep it up here. And our little tea shells, which I've decided I'm going to leave these loose depending on what scene I'm doing. But there we go. I'll get a good picture of it. But I love, let's see if I can tip it with that all on there. Take this off. If I don't take that off, it'll fall. I absolutely love my cook stove done this way. So I'll get some really nice pictures for you. They'll be on the blog post and I took a bef I took a picture of before the, the uh, Perfect Pearls and then I'll take some after. Be sure to read the blog post. There will also be links, like I said, to the Perfect Pearls, to the product site for those if you're interested in learning more. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure with the cook stove. Be sure to read, let's see, I said be sure to read the blog post. Be sure to check the Facebook page. If you're doing some of these kits, share pictures with me. I'd love to see what you're doing too. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.